We just have a couple of notes that we need to finish up on DNA fingerprinting. Um, I'm planning on testing on Friday. Um, we talked about, remember, restriction enzymes cut the DNA at known points. So we have different enzymes that take those short tandem repeats and cut them at designated areas. That cuts them into smaller pieces. If we have a very small sample of DNA, then we can run it on polymerase, run a polymerase chain reaction, which will make millions of copies of the DNA so that we can then run it on gel electrophoresis. Remember with the restriction enzymes, we now use the short tandem repeats because we know where those genes are. There are 13 different loci um, present. So when, rather than testing the entire DNA, they will test a couple of different loci and the more of those that you have that are the same, the higher the probability that it's a match. So it reduces the amount of time that they have to undergo the testing. They don't have to do the whole molecule. They will take genes from two or three of those places where they know that there are repeating tandems and that they will double check those to see if it's a match. Remember when you run it on gel electrophoresis, the um, electricity goes from negative towards the positive. The DNA is pull, put in the wells and it travels down the gel based on size. The shorter or the smaller the pieces of DNA are, the faster they travel on the gel. Since they move towards the positive end of the gel, we know that DNA is negatively charged. So it will move further on the gel the shorter the sequence is, and we can use standards that we run with the unknowns to see how big the pieces are um, compared to the standard. So there's three possible outcomes with DNA analysis. First one is a match. Um, the profile appears the same. Um, second exclusion, it shows that there are differences that can only be explained by two different sources. And then the last one is inconclusive. Data did not support a conclusion as to whether or not there was a match. So there are two different types of DNA that we can use for DNA fingerprinting. Nuclear DNA is found in your nucleus. You have two copies of nuclear DNA, one from your mother, one from your father. So there's 46 chromosomes, 23 are from the mother, 23 are from the father. Mitochondrial DNA is going to be a little bit different. Mitochondrial DNA, so nuclear DNA, like I said, was found in the nucleus, 23 pairs of chromosomes. Uh, each cell contains um, only one nucleus. Mitochondrial DNA is found in the mitochondria, which is found in the cytoplasm. Um, it does not have 23 chromosomes in it, but it does have DNA from the mother. So what happens is the egg has, since it's a cell, it has mitochondria in it, and that mitochondria came from the mother. The sperm has mitochondria, but it's on the tail of the sperm. So it doesn't enter the egg like the chromosomes do. So some differences, it's found in the cytoplasm. It does not reflect both parents' DNA. It only re reflects the mother's DNA. The big difference is that each cell contains hundreds to thousands of mitochondria. So there is a lot more mitochondrial DNA than there is nuclear DNA. So um, this uh, is not used as often as nuclear DNA for um, DNA fingerprinting. Um, but it can be used or can be found in skeletal remains. So if um, there are no other areas or no other tissues that you can take a DNA sample from, uh, mitochondrial can be used in those cases where it's, um, it's not as um, easy to obtain nuclear DNA. So it is more rigorous, it's more time consuming, and more expensive than nucleic DNA testing. So um, it's shaped differently than chromosomal DNA. It is a circle or a loop. Um, there are 37 genes that are involved in the mitochondria and the steps or the processes in um, ATP production. And so the only time it's really used is when nuclear DNA um, processing is not possible. We now have an FBI CODIS DNA database on anybody who has been um, arrested or tried for a particular crime called the Combined DNA Index System. So it's used to link serial crimes and unsolved cases with repeat offenders. So once you are in that database, you stay. 
um, you, was launched in 1998. So, of course, if somebody is committing crimes and they have not uh, been caught and had their DNA analyzed, then um, that can also make it a little bit more difficult to find. But they do have the database. It links all 50 states. Um, it requires four of those restriction markers um, or 13 of the STR markers. So they can either use restriction enzymes and use four different markers or they can use the 13 um, short tandem repeats. Um, future of this, hopefully greater automation of the DNA typing process, trying to make it universal for all states, um, trying to have more and more samples available. So um, single nucleotide polymorphism, which measures one nucleotide change or difference from one individual to another, more sites are needed to differentiate between individuals. But this is one thing that they're looking for for the future and um, knowing or future and being able to um, differentiate even more between individuals. So those are all the notes. You have the DNA review. Um, we are going to work on that this week and go through it before the test.